Hello, my name is Stefan Cartman. Welcome to my studio. Today, we'll be continuing our journey to learn how to prepare and perform chamber music remotely uh, by talking a little bit about the equipment that we'll be using to accomplish that goal. And the first piece of equipment, uh, get ready, it's not really sparkly, but it's a quiet space in which to record. Uh, the reason why we need a quiet space is, well, first of all, that affects the quality of the sound that we record, but also because we're going to be starting and stopping recordings and we'll need a little bit of space in front of and behind the recording because we don't have somebody there to punch the button and then we can immediately play. You may have to pick up an instrument. Uh, you may have to even walk to the other side of the room if your computer is in a different place than, uh, than where you're recording. So space before and after, and during that space, uh, they, it, the microphones are gonna pick up every little noise in the room, from the fan on your computer to the fan in your kitchen uh, to the garbage trucks that are picking up the garbage outside. And it's all well and good if there's a constant stream of that noise from one end of the recording to the other, but we're going to pe be piecing together certain segments. And so when you stop the recording, if there's some sort of a noise that's there, that's not there when you start the next recording, it sounds weird and disjunct when you put the whole thing together. I'll give you a little demonstration of that in just a minute. As I introduce the other parts of the chain where, uh, of this, where the sound comes out of your instrument and goes ultimately into your computer for you to work with. So the next item in the chain is your microphone. Now the system that I use is uh, an XLR microphone that goes through its cable to an audio interface and from there it's passed into my computer. And let me show you a couple of these items. Um, first of all, the microphones that I use are XLR microphones and they're called XLR microphones because of this arrangement of pins that goes into the cable. There's three of them. And these microphones require power from the thing that they're plugged into. Um, in my case, it's plugged into an audio interface, and that's right here. But let me show you how the, the, uh, the microphones get plugged in. Here's a plug that has the three holes for the pins. Okay. And then that, in turn, is plugged in to the audio interface. Now... XLR mics are powered, and so if you're going to use XLR mics, the audio interface that you have also has to have 48 volt power. Now that I've plugged that microphone in, I think I can demonstrate for you uh, what it sounds like. Um, here I'm going to speak into it, and when I have it, um, when I have this mic aimed directly at my face you can see that it picks up in a very narrow field. If I turn it away from my face, you don't hear very much sound. And if it's behind me and aimed it entirely the other direction, you hardly hear anything at all, and I'm turning it back, and now you can hear it because I'm speaking directly into it. All right, um, these microphones are very, very sensitive. And so, though you can't hear this sound, I'm going to now point it at my computer, okay? And my computer's fan is running because whenever I'm doing video or audio, it's very processor intensive. And I'm going to turn up the gain on this microphone using this knob here. I don't know if you can't see it because my big hand is in the way. But do you hear that noise? And now, even though I'm not speaking into the microphone, my voice is quite loud. I'm not really speaking very loud either. Okay, But you hear that noise from the fan. So you can imagine that times, you can imagine that times eight, because ultimately we're going to have two tracks for each one of the voices that we're going to do in the string quartet, or at least uh, that's what I had for the cello quartet that you would have seen if you saw the introduction to this, uh, to this video series. Okay, let's talk a little bit about that audio interface. I'm going to again just flip to that camera so that you can see it. Uh, the audio interface is this machine. I uh, am going to unplug the other mic and notice that I turned off the power first. I'm going to turn it back on so that my other mic is active. So this audio interface connects to my computer through a, uh, a Thunderbolt connection. 
Um, the Thunderbolt interfaces are a little more expensive just because the connection speed is faster. Um, but all of the audio interfaces have similar controls, whether they connect to the computer through, uh, through Thunderbolt or through USB. And, uh, and here are the controls. Each one of the mics has got a knob that controls how sensitive the mic is. In other words, how loud the sound is going to be coming into your system. And it's important to have that control because you need to set the level of recording so that it is appropriate for your instrument. If what comes out of your instrument is uh, too loud, it'll clip the sound at the top and it'll get distorted. I'm sure you've all heard that when you've been having online lessons and things like that. So those two controls. There's a control for the output that would typically go to speakers, but when we're doing our recording, we're not going to have any speakers on. So that doesn't really matter for our purposes at the moment. And then, and this is a very important control, the uh, earphone, the earphone amplifier. And uh, you notice, you will have noticed by now that, uh, that I'm connected to earphones and that's so that I can hear the sound that's coming out of my microphones and the sound that's coming out of my uh, computer so that when I show you things on my computer, I can hear them. But I also wear these when I'm recording. And the reason for that is if you are playing some of the other parts and you're trying to play with them, if that comes through a speaker, the sound of the speaker hits the microphone and then goes back to the speaker and then this feedback loop starts. I, you may have heard it before. It's a very high-pitched whistle and it's extremely loud. And uh, that's why you can't actually have a microphone and speakers on in the room at the same time. Now, for those of you that have had online lessons and have been doing that, you probably have noticed over, over the course of having your lessons that the sound quality gets very weird sometimes. Well, that's because the computers now uh, have got these very uh, intense algorithms that take the sound wave that you're making in, 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 your, uh, in your microphone and basically send out the reverse signal. Uh, this is the same technology that they use in noise canceling earphones. And that's one of the reasons why it's so challenging to have uh, to have virtual lessons online is because the sound is like altered with these with these strange algorithms. Um, there are ways to get around that, but that's not the subject for this particular video. So um, enough for you to know that you need to use earphones when you're doing these recordings. And that's the next thing I'd like to show you. So. Uh, as we're going into this, uh, you'll notice that I have uh, I have this wire uh, plugged into uh, my audio interface. I'm going to follow that wire down to the big mess of wire that's on the floor, and all the way around here to where I am plugged in. Now I keep this on the back of my chair because. Uh, Quite often, I'll get up to press a button on my computer or something, and, uh, and 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 I get jerked backwards. Well, at this point, I've learned to remember to keep this plugged in when I'm recording or when I need to hear sound from my computer, and I unplug it when I'm walking around the room, and it doesn't disturb me. Now, I'll show you my really complicated high-tech system for my earphones. And for that, I'm going to this other camera. All right, so I showed you from the other side what this looked like. I'm just going to get a little closer here and show you what earphones I'm using. All right, here they are. Really cheap, uh, really cheap earphones that came with my, I don't know, four iPhones ago. Um, and the reason why I use these kinds of earphones is that the sound quality actually is not that bad on them, but also because they are not over my ears. They don't get in the way when I try to play. And also because they're, uh, they allow a little sound to come in around, I can actually hear myself in the moment. And the reason why I have this other high-tech gadget here connected to the earphones is to keep them in place because I don't like to have wires hanging down in front of me when I play. The reason for that will be self-evident when I show you what my position is like when I'm actually doing my recording. So I put my earphones in, I take my high-tech clip, and I clip it to the back of my collar. 
and then nothing is in front of me it's all behind me and you already saw on the back of my chair I have a place to plug it in okay and then I don't have a big earphone on here that pushes my head sideways when I'm trying to play the cello and I don't have one here that gets crushed under the cello and pulled down and up and that's my own system now you may not need such an elaborate high-tech system as I have uh, to do your playing if you're playing a uh, 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 flute and there's a wire hanging down in front of you it might not get in your way if you're playing violin it might earphones certainly do get in the way when you're playing violin particular particularly on this side okay but it's it's different for every instrument and I leave that certainly up to you um, okay the next piece of equipment that you need is the place where your audio goes into your computer um, in my case I'm using uh, MacBook Pro uh, let me switch to that camera and there you see it and here you see actually the uh, the recording of the Klangle quartet that I played if I switch to uh, if I switch to that camera you can see actually the recording itself and what I'll do is I will just put these two tracks the top two on solo mode you saw the light go on there and then I'll play the track from the beginning and what you're gonna hear is only the top two tracks silence you can't necessarily hear it but when two silences like that stack up sometimes you can hear suddenly an increase in room noise and the reason why you didn't hear a lot of that in this particular recording is because my amount of room noise is pretty small because I have a quiet room hang on a second switch back to the right camera here okay I'm going to get into how the recording uh, was layered together in the in the next video today really was just an introduction to the devices that I have in my studio um, I will say that the uh, software that I'll be using and that my students will be using for their chamber music and that you saw on the computer screen uh, a moment ago is Pro Tools. There's a free version of it, and it is it is the uh, it is the software that a majority of audio engineers that record acoustic instruments use. Um, the system that I used, as I said, was an audio interface and XLR microphones, and that's connected to my computer through uh, a Thunderbolt connection. But there are uh, there are plenty of these audio interfaces that connect through a USB. And uh, those are very good and they're, they're plenty fast for our purposes. Um, also, uh, a cheaper version of this whole setup is to buy a USB mic, which houses the, uh, houses the preamps uh, and the audio interface all in one capsule with a, with a microphone. Um, sometimes we have to uh, go through some software things in order to get... Uh, a program like Pro Tools to recognize the microphone and I, I will also mention that there are uh, that there are several different uh, products that are out there that people use to record on their computer um, I use Pro Tools there's Audacity there's Ableton 5 there's GarageBand there's Studio One um, Audacity is another free program a lot of uh, a lot of students in my university are using it it's only important that we all uh, students and coaches use the same software for that particular recording because when you start passing it from one uh, one platform to another it can get a little bit confusing um, 
Okay, so I'm going to dig in with Pro Tools next time. I did leave some uh, some links to uh, USB microphones. That's the all-in-one unit that's, uh, that's a little bit less expensive, as well as some links to uh, microphones and to audio interfaces. So um, before you look at the next uh, before you look at the next video, which will be layering these, I would suggest uh, having a look at Pro Tools if you plan on using it or becoming familiar enough with GarageBand or whatever other program that you're using um, that you can uh, record tracks with it because I'm not going to introduce that software. I'm going to introduce uh, Pro Tools. Okay, thanks for joining me and I'll see you for the next video.